What is up guys, it's Vortex here and today I'm going to be showcasing you my D-Brigade EX3 deck profile. Uh, I've been doing a lot of testing with this deck online and in locals and I think I've got it finally to a place where I'm happy with it and um, it's very different to the other EX3 builds that are currently out there. Um, if you are looking forward to this deck profile and are very interested in D-Brigade, I've already got some gameplay videos of D-Brigade EX3 on the channel. So please feel free to look through the channel and if you like the content, please do subscribe. It helps the channel out quite a lot. But let's get straight into the deck profile. We'll start off with the eggs and for the first egg we're playing four Pagu Mon. Essentially, um, as we're playing a rush strategy, uh, we do value the extra card that we get from Pagumon uh, compared to the re reboot that we would get from the Missymon. Uh, getting card advantage in this deck is very important, and that's the reason why we play four of it in the deck. So, we play four of that, and then we also play the one of Missymon. Sometimes there'll be times where you attack with, for example, the Seals Dramon or the 5k Command Dramon or any of the Command Dramons really that survive any damage. Um, and it becomes basically a sit-in target for your opponent to swing into it. So you don't, you obviously do get advantage from swinging into the security at first, but you kind of want to keep them on the field so that you can get another swing uh, next turn as well. Um, this helps because essentially if you just play another D brigade which is something that you'll do anyways um, you'll be able to protect it at least a little bit from attacks so uh, that's the reason why I play one of this and then let's get on to the rookies play quite a few rookies uh, as you might suspect uh, but the first one that we play of is the four of command um, this is a this is the two cost command Ramon has 3k DP and we use this to basically try to memory choke our opponent. The two play cost is actually very important because, as I said, it allows you to memory choke. But also the 3k DP is nothing to laugh at because it actually gets over quite a few rookies, uh, especially the, like the searcher rookies in the format. Then we play two of the new command Ramon, which is EX3. Uh, this effect doesn't matter at all really, um, the decoy doesn't really come out and essentially if your guy is going to get deleted, you kind of want it to be deleted, um, so this doesn't really matter as much, but we play it just due to the fact that it's cheap, it's free cost, so the average cost of a rookie, and it's a commander mod name with the D Brigade title, so we play two of it just to add more consistency to the deck. We then play four of the BT4 Command Ramon. This card is very important because it just means that if this was to get deleted, which it probably will, although uh, you'll be able to find another Command Ramon from the top three cards, and that's very important. So we play four of it. Then we play four of the ST5 Command Ramon. Uh, the four costs are also pretty good at memory choking because if you are set to free or they give you free, uh, you can set them to basically one, which is obviously really good. Basically means they can't do anything on their turn. Also has 5k DP, which is actually pretty relevant. Uh, the 5k DP is a lot. It beats over the level threes and even some level fours. So we play we play it as obviously a D brigade name, so we play it, of course. Then we have four of the blocker BT5 Command Ramon. Uh, this one's actually pretty important because it does come up. Sometimes when they have like their OTK turn, um, they don't have piercing. So blocking that just basically means that their turn doesn't exist. So we take that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's obviously a D Brigade name, which is very important. Then we get on to two Hagurimon. Um, allows us to trash cards to draw two, which is obviously very important. Um, all the D Brigade cards are cyborg, so you can trash that. And the draw two is actually pretty important. Um, I'm tempted to up this potentially, but I think this is the correct number for now. Um, I feel like if you see too many of these cards, it just becomes a bit of a problem. So having two is perfectly fine. And then finishing off, we have two of the ST13 Chakurimon. Um, 
Blue Flare, Bagra Army, Twilight slash Dark Knight Mon, uh, Cross Hearts. Uh, these are all still relevant archetypes in the game and they get more and more support as more sets come out. So having this in the deck here is very important um, and it's still a pretty good rush card, free play cost at 3k DP. So it's all good. We love this card. So let's get on to the level fours now. And uh, to start off, we're playing four Seals Dramon. Um, I think this is probably the best EX free card we got. And the reason being is because it has jamming. Um, it's also a digi cost of two, which helps us choke our opponent out potentially if we're at one uh, memory, which is quite common. Um, and also like, you know, it's just added pressure and it's a D Brigade name. And the D Brigade name actually matters quite a lot. Um, there is obviously the Seals Drummond blocker, but what I what I found out about that is that it's just anti like this like anti rush, which is something that we don't really need. This card is still very rush focused because it's got jamming, uh, but yeah. So we play four of this. So obviously the name D Brigade is very important. Also a cyborg, so we can trash it as well. Uh, has synergy with tamers, so we play four of it. Then. Um, let's get the other level four, which is two Grumble Mon. Um, we play loads of Black Tamers, and if we find this card, uh, we Grumble Mon for game, and uh, that is still very pivotal for this deck because you know swing in from a Tamer uh, is something important. And I know we have finishers in the way of Dark Dramon, but um, just having another alternate win condition. With Grumble Mon is still very important, so we played two of it. Then we get onto the level fives, and we only play the one tank Dramon. The reason why I only play one of this is because essentially we don't build into a level six, so there's not really the need to have the three other tank Dramons. The reason why I play this is because, again, it's a D Brigade card, um, and the when did you evolving effect is rather important. Um, allows us to reveal top three cards and then play a D Brigade in its trace of, uh, and a play cost of five or less. This means we can get the Seals Dramon, but we can also get all the Command Dramons. And sometimes, like, in hands, we won't have enough Command Dramons or we won't have any at all. And so just having this guy to cycle the top three cards to find one is very important. And obviously, if there's Seals Dramon underneath it, it also gains Rush. So... We continue that rush strategy, but I don't like playing more of this because essentially you're building into a level six from EX3 anyways. We don't play the EX3 Dark Um so we don't have a need for four of these in the deck. And plus, if we were to go into if we were to build like a deck around the EX3 Dark unfortunately, like it's very inconsistent because you only have one good level four and one good level five. So <laughs> we only play one of this. Then we get onto the level sixes and we are playing four Dark Dramon. I know people have a bit of a problem with this because people say like tend to say like, I'll oh, play three because four is too bricky. But in my testing with this deck, having the fourth is pretty good, um, especially as you can trash this card because it is a cyborg uh, through a lot of different effects, such as the Haguru, such as the Tamers. Uh, can be trashed for a lot of other things. It's still a name, so we play four of it. Um, we basically are guaranteed to hit it throughout the game, and that's something that we actually desperately need sometimes. Uh, because if you play three, sometimes you'll just miss it in a game entirely. Especially, and if we need that card to finish off the game, uh, yeah, we, it kind of sucks. So we play four of it, and then we get onto the two level sevens. Of course, it's Death Exmon. Um, Death Exmon is obviously taking a little bit of a hit due to Cross Hearts basically losing uh, a lot of power, but it's still potentially like a free guy that you can play on your turn, and it clears the board most of the time anyways. And having a 15k that costs 5 to play, which clears the board, is um, pretty good I'd say. So yeah, we played two of it. Um, helps with, it actually helps with the rush strategy, but it also controls your opponent's field, which is sometimes desperately needed. And let's get on to the options now. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some controversy with my options, but we play four Pride Memory Boost. Um, obviously, a lot of the cards in the deck you can hit off this, especially with the rookie lineup. I think it's around 
22. So you have a lot of targets for Pride Memory Boost. Um, sometimes the memory you just gain as well is pretty good. So we play three of it. Uh, we don't need four. Uh, three is good enough. We then also play three Iron Fisted Onslaught. One of the things that I don't think people get with this deck is that, yes, you could be aggressive, but you need to have answers back because if they somehow get more advantage over you, then you're pretty much screwed. So you need to have like these big deletion effects in D Brigade to stop that from happening. And that's why I play three of this um, because sometimes they'll have like a big stack, but it's not protected. So getting rid of a guy like that, very important. Um, or just like help getting rid of some of the digi evolution sources from stuff like War Grey X uh, or Gaio. So very important. And in the same vein as that, actually, we play full armor flare again. Like uh, this is this is kind of like similar to my ultimate cup list. Uh, in my ultimate cup list, I was playing four iron fist onslaught as well. Uh, the reason why I play four ultimate flares because it hits more in the format currently. We're currently seeing stuff like Alpha Mon, Metal Guru, X Antibody, uh, War Grey X Antibody. All these cards and decks become popular again because uh, Cross Heart is essentially out of the format. And what do big stacks hate? DJ Evolve 3. And we love it. <laughs> we love playing this card. And especially if they're like playing a like a rookie strategy as well, like a rookie rush strategy, this is a killer card against them as well. It covers all, all the aspects um, of your matchups. So play four of it. And finally, let's get into the Tamers. We play free Kazu. I think in my original D Brigade list, um, I said that this card is a four of. Um, you want to see it every time. I still do feel like it's a really good card, but um, you only need three. I feel like in this build because essentially if you hit one you you basically have your advantage engine online because it, you're going to be turn, like giving your opponent's going to give you like one or two memory every turn if you don't have Izzy up uh, which obviously we play Izzy um, so this allows you to get to two or three memory consistently and what that essentially means is that you can play like one or two rookies per turn um, while also choking them so and also the, the draw and discard engine that this card provides is very important so we play for a bit and then to end off we have the two izzy azumis uh thank you for reprinting this i guess uh bandai because the reprint looks nice um uh, but yeah it, izzy is still the best black level uh set to free tamer just due to the fact that it only costs free to play and it actually means quite a lot, because um, if this checks security, you gain a memory, so it really annoys your opponent. Um, and if it's on your turn, you also get to choke with Izzy, because usually when you play on your first turn, Izzy or well any Tamer that's forecast, you give them a lot of advantage, basically allowing them to go to level 5. This basically means that they're forced to only totally go into a level 4, uh, and also chokes on uh, alternate turns as well. So we play two of it. And uh, yeah, that is the Tamer lineup. Anyways, that has been my deck profile for EX3 D Brigade. I wanted to really push the BT9 uh, competitiveness that we had uh, with D Brigade with the new DefX card and also other aspects of um, D Brigade and push it further with the EX3 cards that we got as well. I know it's a little bit different to other EX3 uh, D Brigade lists that we have out there, but I think this is probably the most consistent and probably the best one that I've seen so far. But um, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this deck profile, uh, find it a little bit more interesting, then uh, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more Digimon content. Thanks guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.